Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we're going to talk about Centralite's log management. And by talk about it, I mean we're going to install Splunk, which is actually a nice piece of software that kind of centralizes log files that you kind of want to kind of put together. Um, like say you have multiple like, you know, Java application servers and you want to see, hey, is every server having like these specific errors and you don't have to log into each one to see if, if it does. And Splunk is a very nice application that essentially ingests the log and then you can query based off of that so that you can be like, oh, hey, which servers have these errors, which don't. Um, and you can try to troubleshoot, creates alerts, creates dashboards and creates things from it. So in this video, we're just gonna just set up the Splunk server and, and then in the next few videos, we will set up the actual forwarders that we will install on our machines to forward the data into Splunk and then probably a few other videos on how to like do some querying and create some dashboards or alerts. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself and I. So if you enjoy the content, want to sponsor me, send me from Sweet Swag with some hardware. Uh, my email is in the description below. So, all right guys, let's get started. So, um, the few things to know about Splunk, Splunk is actually an enterprise um, log, centralize log centralization software. But the thing about Splunk is it actually does have like a free tier where you can actually install it and you can use it um, up to like 500 megabytes uh, a day of ingestion. So for most people's home lab, you're probably not ingesting, you know, more than 500 megabytes. If you are, you probably can't use the free tier, but if you aren't, Essentially, like, you know, you have a few VMs, it's not that bad. So you can actually go to type in Splunk Enterprise Download in your Google search. Um, and then you can see there's a free trial. The free trial is essentially like 60 days and then it goes to like free tier. So in here, you enter your information here. This does not need to necessarily be a business email, but this is just creating your free Splunk account. <clears throat> Um, and then it's kind of like the same thing when we were talking about like the Windows download too. So you'll enter all your information and then it'll bring you to a downloads page. So um, I've already entered all the information um, in, in my other tab here. So we'll just go here and then it'll get to this downloads page. <clears throat> so in this case, we're going to install on Linux and we're going to grab the, the RPM version um, because we're running Red, uh, Oracle Linux 8, which is a Red Hat distribution, which uses RPMs. If you are using... <clears throat> Uh, you boot into like a Debian system, you would use the .deb. And if you wanted to build it more from source and, and extract it from source, you would get the TGZ um, toggle. So in this case, we will download this RPM. So we'll hit download, but it'll bring you to this nice page. It'll still download, but it'll bring you to, to this nice page um, where you essentially, it essentially gives you the wget command to actually download it on your box. So what we're going to do is log into our box, 147. Make sure we have wget installed, but we gotta install it, guys. Like, hit type install, <laughs> and then we will install this. <clears throat> While that installs, we will also set up the DNS because we need the, the DNS also set up. So let's edit this real quick. Make sure you update the serial number, and then down here, Splunk. One forty-seven, and then commit. All right. So now that's committed, this should hopefully have installed. Um, while we wait for that, we will also so so Splunk also has the front end web GUI. So in that case, we will also create the certs um, and use those certs from our CA server to actually populate this. Um, so. Now that that's done, we do this. Then we get that, grab the RPM, it will install. Man, I need faster internet, guys. It's only like you know, 100 megs per second, not fast enough. Actually, I got an NVMe drive that I want to plug in for even faster data storage. That should be another video that I should create this weekend. <laughs> um, but anywho, so now we have the package, right? So we can do RPM I and then the package. Um, so you can you can tell obviously that completed really quickly. So a fun fact is like you can type partial and then hit tab and it will tab complete. So if you like have like random names like this, you can hit do a tab complete thing. Um, it's very nice. I should do a Linux like cheat sheet command cheat sheet thing. That'd be kind of fun. I haven't done that before. So now. Um, it will essentially unpackage this RPM, install all the uh, items, install anything else that it needs, and it will be 
you essentially have Splunk installed. Another very simple install. The hard part is the configuration, making sure you get everything you need. So um, while that's happening, we will also log into our CA server. CA dragon.local. And we will create the Splunk cert. So create the Splunk directory. And then step CA Splunk dot dragon dot Oh, um, it's actually C certificate. It's been a little bit since I created one. <laughs> Splunk that's um, dragon dot local, and then the cert dragon dot local dot cert and Splunk dot dragon dot local dot key. It will ask for the provisioner, so we actually need to go to our vault water in this case. Oh, my vault water might be down. My vault warden's down. I had to restart everything. Um, so in this case, we will actually just grab it off our server and I'll have to restart my vault order. Uh, most very secure password, you just put it in plain text and you stuff.txt. <laughs> oh, it didn't paste. All right, copy, paste. Paste, there you go. Okay, so now we got the sets in there. So we can see that it actually finished installing. So when it finished installing, you, there will actually be a Splunk user, which actually the home directory will be of Splunk. Well, pretty much all the files for Splunk is in here. So what we're actually going to do is start Splunk and accept the license. It will prompt you to create a username. So we're gonna just use admin and then we'll create a password for it. Confirm the password and it will essentially start Splunk, do all the things that it needs to do. Um, what we're going to do here is now copy the sets over. So we got the two sets. So we'll copy these sets over to splunk.dragon.local. Oh, SCP guys, SCP. So um, with this, we will need to create a few things. So the first thing that we will need to do is make the directory uh, op Splunk Etsy, op Splunk Etsy auth, and then slocc certs. Um, this is not a required thing. Like this directory isn't, you know, a required thing, but based off of like all the Splunk documentation, it tells you, Hey, you should just put it in here. Um, so it just kind of conforms to standards. Um, because like, say for example, like you could put it anywhere, but like, say, you know, you got like a new employee or like someone else is like jumping in to like, you know, help cover you for you for something. And they're like reading documentation and you know, Splunk default documentation says, hey, you know, custom search to go in here. You should probably put custom search in there so it's not like, oh, I don't know what to look now. So we will change to this directory and then we will copy root and then Splunk. Oh, my God. Talk. All right, there we go. Um, Splunk dot dragon and then here. So now we got the two sets. Now, the thing that we want to know is also that these sets should also be owned by um, the Splunk user. So ch own Splunk dot Splunk. And we actually want to make sure that this directory is also owned by Splunk, which is not. So um, ch own Splunk dot Splunk slo sets. Okay. So now it's all owned by Splunk. So Splunk will be able to read it and see everything that it needs to do. So what we'll also go, so what we'll do next, become the Splunk user again. We will um, edit the Etsy system local web.conf. And by edit, I mean, we're gonna create this file because create and edit because the file doesn't exist. So what we will do here is, and I actually have it already copy and pasted. We will have to edit the settings section and it's actually able Splunk web SSL to set it to true. The private key path, which is where we just put the key, and the server cert, where we put the cert. So now we should be able to restart oh, um, Splunk restart. And it should bring us to, well, when it finishes restarting, it will bring us to the, the web page 
Well, we can go to the web page. Um, the one thing to note is the web page is also set on 8,000. Um, so you can see how it says HTTPS, and then this is the 127. So that's home at 8,000. So that's that's the one thing to note that it's actually on port 8,000 and not your default like 443 or like 80. So in your browser, you just do it like colon 8,000. So now you can see that um, first time signing in, username is admin, and the password we created. So yep, we created that. And now, welcome to Splunk, guys. Um, the other thing here to note is there is a doc theme mode. So um, set that to doc. And I was like, why didn't why didn't it set to doc? Do I have to refresh it? I might have to refresh it. There we go. There we go. How to refresh it, guys? Now we got doc theme. So that's pretty much it to install Splunk. We will create some a few more videos to show you how to ingest data into here and then use Splunk. But for the install, it's pretty simple. You kind of just configure it. We got the cert working, and now you kind of have your base default Splunk. Um, but you can't. Yes, I got it. I got a doc mode. Um, but I mean, there's there's nothing ingesting. So like, if you do an index wildcard, um, everything is based off by index. So you can see in this index, there is nothing here right now. Um, so that's pretty much it for Splunk. There looks like a few other things that are kind of cool, actually, like team members, configure members. We might, I don't know. I know it does SAML authentication. Um, maybe we'll try to set up SAML authentication um, eventually, but that's pretty much it for getting Splunk installed. So if you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next few videos on how to ingest and use Splunk. So awesome. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys later.